all of the structures I'll be talking about in this final section of the lesson are either outside of the cell and what is called the extracellular space or spanning two cells, linking them together in some way. The most obvious extracellular structure is in plant cells. It was visible to the earliest microscopes and that is the cell wall. The cell wall is secreted by plants. It is mostly cellulose and some proteins. There are actually two different types of cell wall. There's the primary cell wall, which is the one that I'm mainly talking about when I talk about the cell wall. All plant cells have it. It is cellulose. It is also pectin, that protein that causes jams and things to gel up. And it allow, you know, it's pliable. It's a little bit more stretchy than what we call a secondary cell wall, which if a cell is going to need to be strong and very structural, then it can develop this secondary cell wall when it is finished growing that is stiff and thick and lignified, meaning it has lignin inside of it, which is very tough and durable. And so it serves a, a second purpose, one that we often associate with cell walls. So it's kind of like the cellulose and the microtubules that might help organize this whole thing are the steel and then the lignin and things are like the concrete filling that steel network up to form a very solid wall. Now, while the cell wall seems solid, it's actually porous. There have to be holes to allow those cells to communicate with each other and in this case the holes are called plasma desmata and they are extensions of the cell membrane that go from one plant cell to another so all the cells membranes are connected that way ions and nutrients can diffuse from one cell into the next with no interference from the cell walls the plasma desmata extend through something called a gap junction which is a protein-based tube between the two cells. In animal cells, there's also a carbohydrate protein or glycoprotein outside of their cell membrane. It's called proteoglycan. And with the water present in our bodies, there, this glycoprotein mixed with water creates a sort of gel layer between some of the cells. There's also a lot of collagen fibers, which is another very import, um, important but also abundant protein in animal organisms or in the bodies of animals. And so both of these together form what we call the extracellular matrix. And the extracellular matrix with its fibers and that gel-like glycoprotein helps filter materials, hold cells together in tissues and tissues together into larger structures and it aids in chemical signaling as cells communicate with each other. Cellular connections are really important and there's three major types that I'm going to discuss next and that will bring our lesson to a conclusion. Although these connections are not technically organelles, they're related to the cytoskeleton and extracellular components, so I wanted to discuss them right now. Connections between cells serve two major functions, and that is adhesion between the cells and communication between the cells. So the first is a tight junction, and that's what you see here. Tight junctions go all the way around the cell, fusing them to the cells around them. This creates a seal so that substances must go through the cells and not the extracellular space. So you can see this is the intestines, you've got the microvilli there, and so you want those nutrients to have to go into the cell, not around the cells. So you see a lot of these in intestinal cells and that just keeps digestion separate from the rest of the body. The second type of junction is a desmosome, which I hinted at when I discussed the intermediate filaments. They anchor cells together, and they extend through a protein plaque that is on either cell's plasma membrane. 
They connect cells without forming a tight seal, and so things can still flow through that intermembrane space or that extracellular space. And this is also the reason that sometimes your skin doesn't flake off one cell at a time. It actually peels off in sheets because of all these intermediate filaments and desmosomes holding and adhering the cells together into a large flat tissue. Your skin has a lot of these desmosomes because it needs to be tough. It endures a lot more wear and tear than other tissues in your body. And the final type of junction is a gap junction. I mentioned it just a little while ago when I was talking about plasma desmata, but they are not only in plant cells. You can find them in animal cells and other eukaryotic cells as well. Gap junctions are simply a channel that allows two member, you know, that allows two cells to communicate by passing chemicals through those channels. This is much, much easier than signals having to diffuse out of one cell or be secreted by one cell and then, you know, enter another cell through more processes that we'll be talking about in membrane transport. So this is a very, very easy way to facilitate communication between nearby cells is just to have an open channel called a gap junction. And that wraps up our organelle lesson.